Um, well, my name is William, William Close, and this is the Earth Harp. And uh, it's an instrument I invented about, I don't know, about 15 or 16 years ago. And um, I, uh, it gets its title from the first time I, I set it up. I, I set up chambers on one side of a canyon and ran the strings a thousand feet across to the other side. So I turned that canyon into a giant harp. And, you know, I've, I've had some amazing adventures with it. Um, I've uh, strung it to the top of a mountain, um, to old gross forests. Um, I strung it at the Coliseum in Rome, Grand Theater in Shanghai, the Kennedy Center. But recently, I've been stringing skyscrapers. So I'll mount it to the, to the uh, ground and shoot the strings like a thousand feet straight up. Isn't that your tour coming up? Uh, yeah, you know, it's an ongoing process. Whenever I can con convince a skyscraper to let me <laughs> attach my harp to it, then, then it becomes part of the tour. But, uh, yeah, the skyscraper projects are pretty cool. Can you tell me more about the skyscraper project? Yeah. Well, um, what I love about when I attach the earth harp to the skyscraper, first of all, it sets world records. I have Guinness has given me the world record from my skyscraper stuff. Now, when I attach it to the skyscraper, it's great because it becomes public art, you know, like people can see it from all around. And then they can also, um, and then we do a concert series and so, you know, they're seeing this amazing harp and then we, you know, we do a, a really beautiful concert series. So that's pretty much the format. Let's go back to the time where you, give it, you were given the Guinness World Record. How was that feeling like? What, what happened? You know, it was really amazing when I, when I got the Guinness World Record. I was in Singapore. And um, I mounted the chamber to the base of a skyscraper and ran the strings 1,000 feet straight up. And Guinness was there and the World Record Association. With lots of, and they were there with lots of measuring tapes and things. How did you feel? It felt amazing, yeah. you know, because I view it almost like a sport, you know. It's like, it's music, it's architecture, it's rigging, it's um, kind of rock climbing. Yeah. You know, it's sort of everything together. So to have Guinness uh, honor me like that, I was really grateful. Now, you've been everywhere, setting up your harp everywhere. Where has been your favorite place to go? Favorite place you've played at? You know, I've, I there's so many great spots that I loved. Um, top three. Top three, okay. Um, <laughs> well, let's see. Um, I love the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C. Beautiful, beautiful place, beautiful theater. It's concert hall. Um, I was at the Kimmel Center once, and it's a concert hall that's shaped, the interior is shaped like the interior of a cello. And so when it's in a concert hall, you know, it's just so beautiful sounding, because it's so, you can hear it so well. And then, um, you know, probably number one was uh, um, stringing uh, One Cal Plaza, which is a, a giant golden skyscraper in downtown Los Angeles. And uh, it was awesome. It was awesome. So. Oh, you know, today I heard you play and you are so inspiring. What would you say to someone who's starting off playing a harp? Well, I mean, I, my background is really more as a designer. And, an, you know, I come from an architecture, music, sculpture background. And then I spent a lot of time on sailboats. So. I'm really not a harp player per se, but uh, the reason I call it a harp is because it technically is. You know, it's it's uh, this has 27 strings and they're all individual notes. So that's kind of how a harp is set up. You know, many strings, all one note. And also, I just I love the idea of the harp. You know, it's kind of this this it's been a part of history for so long. You know, it's one of the earliest instruments. And so, uh, yeah, anyway, I'm harping on that. But to, to, add, to your point, I would say um, anyone who's, who's looking for uh, things to inspire them in whatever medium they're doing, I would say look outside of your medium. You know, if you're a musician, look at architecture or um, sports or, I don't know, different things, you know, and see if you can find the music in that. If you're a painter, look at music, you know, or listen to music. and Because I think that those crossovers are where some really interesting inspiration happens. I agree. Okay, my last question. Other than earth, hard playing, what other things do you love to do? 
Well, I'm a very avid sailor. Um, I have a, a really beautiful sailboat that um, I see is, it's like a musical instrument, you know? And so I, um, I just, uh, I love to sail and it's like out on the water, you hear the music of nature, you know? You hear the music of the wind and the waves and um, I'd say that that's my passion. William, thank you so much for having us interview you today, and it was so lovely to meet you, and your music is inspiring and beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> right on. Hey, thanks so much for having me. our coverage of NAM. If you like what you saw, go ahead and click the like button and hit subscribe. To see more videos, click over here.